Hi, everyone. Uh, my talk will target an audience of just system administrator or network administrator. I'm not a developer that will, I believe everyone should understand this talk. Uh, not like the previously, previously with lots of strange language on the screen. Okay, then I'm um, Olivier Cocharlabé. I'm network engineer at Orange, a telco French company. Uh, one of my second role in Orange is um, I'm doing the support for about uh, 300 firewall uh, PF based. On a uh, second job I've got is I'm a visiting lecturer at uh, Rennes University. Uh, during a few days per year when I give a um, network lesson, but all based on FreeBSD. Uh, on my spare time, uh, I am the author of FreeNAS, but I'm no more involved with this project since I've given it to X system. And I'm FreeBSD port committer. On my current playground is a BSD router project with just a simple FreeBSD tunes for routing stuff. Then, working on this project, I had to, to tune it for networking, and I had to build some network uh, performance lab. I reuse uh, the concept of my colleague at Orange, and I try to do it, but just with software, or not with very expensive uh, XCR stuff like that. Then, during my talk, I will present you lots of benchmark stuff, benchmark result. On about benchmark, there is a um, very interesting talk from Brendan Gregg. Um, in his talk, uh, I didn't attend, but I, I read the slides. There's one slide which says that all benchmarks are wrong. And I'm quite agree with this one. And this will include all my talk too. And I will explain you why. First, before to speaking about benchmark and tuning, we need to be agree about the unit we will use. I'm a network guy, I'm working with networking stuff. Then the router has two main jobs. The first job is forwarding. It means he needs to forward packets between this interface. The second one is maintaining his routing table with routing protocol, but I will not speak about, uh, about this. Then our main unit is a packet per second unit, and it's the only unit you have to use when you are a network guy. Uh, Second stuff, there is an RFC explaining how to correctly the methodology of benchmarking router. I try to follow, but not perfectly this RFC, and I will explain you why later. Now that we are agree about the units, uh, you need to understand some reference units. On a gigabit interface, uh, the maximum line rate is uh, 148 frames per second. We use the, the, the term frame because frame is for Ethernet layer on packet just uh, on the IP layer. But in all my bench, I'm using small packets and one packet is one frame. I will use the term packet per second. And another big detail that it's almost everywhere forgotten, it's uh, gigabit, uh, since gigabit Ethernet, there is two wire. One wire for transmitting and one wire for receiving. It's a full duplex media then theoretically you need to do transmit and receive at the same time. This means when you are speaking about line rate gigabit router, your device needs to be able to forward at three million, about three million packets per second. And this is, um, but this is about line rate router, but on 10 more for 10 gigabit router, but who needs technically speaking line rate? Then I need to introduce you another concept which is how to translate packet per second with bandwidth. It's quite easy. You just multiply your PPS with the packet size. But on the internet, each packet doesn't have the same size. Then for Simplify, uh, long years ago, they choose a distribution, a standard distribution, which is for one big packet, you've got uh, four medium packets and seven small. This is called a simple internet mix. On using this distribution from your packet rate, you can estimate or give some value uh, using a standard reference about the equivalent in bandwidth rate. But I'm a network guy. I'm not using the bandwidth as the IP layer. Then I'm using bandwidth as the Ethernet layer. Then I'm using, um, I need to add the Ethernet overlay. 
And in my slide, if you will see some table referencing bandwidth, it will be at the Ethernet level. Now, about who needs line rate gigabit or 10 gigabit router? With these two concepts, packet per second and this uh, distribution, we can estimate what the minimum rate using the simple emix distribution for reaching, for filling your gigabit link or your 10 gigabit link at full duplex. And this is uh, the seven key I recall, 700,000 packets per second for a gigabit router on 7 million for a 10 gigabit router. On my lab, uh, I need that all my device reach at minimum this value for be called just a simple gigabit router or 10 gigabit. Not line weight, but a simple gigabit. Now, how, to, I, how I did my bench. Uh, we are a telco at Orange. We, do, we are not, uh, we don't sell uh, hardware. Then I need to take care that my customer we don't have any problem. Uh, we have a telco, we don't care about what the customer will do with our link. Then if I install a gigabit router, I need to take care that this router theoretically can receive uh, the, the worst case possible. It's been a, a line weight traffic using smallest packet size. And this is why my bench are different uh, from the RFC. My bench, I'm generating the worst case ever on in one side, on, on the other side, I'm waiting and I'm measuring how, what's the rate during this worst case. It's very different of the, of the unit you will see on the, for some uh, material of the manufacturer. On now, on my lab, a little more details on my hardware lives I will use for all my talk. Uh, I'm using, I'm reusing all stuff I get uh, in Orange and I will do lots of tests. My biggest server is a Xeon 8 core with a embedded uh, Emulex card, 10 gigabit card on the Chelsea card, 10 gigabit. I've got two super micro with 8 core Atom, one with uh, Chelsea and one with Intel. This is great because I can compare the behavior between Chelsea and Intel. On two small, uh, one NetGate and one PC Engine CPU. This is for my gigabit uh, world. I don't have Melanox, uh, I want to test them. They are very good review. Uh, I don't have, for the moment, six core one socket CPU, and I don't have multi socket CPU because, uh, but this is can be interesting too. On about the detail, all the SFP, 10 gigabit SFP are the same everywhere. It's not uh, a matter. Now, before tuning a free BSD or a every kind of server, there's a, a first concept that you need to understand is how uh, today a standard. Uh, Network card is working on a FreeBSD. Today, when your driver loads, the kernel gives the information to the network card how many CPU he's got. And with this information, the network card will create a multiple queue with a maximum value depending on the driver. And then, each time the card will receive a packet, he will use a hashing on this packet on each packet belonging to one flow will end into uh, the same queue each time. It's a very important concept in network world. Not to, for the, uh, all packet belonging to one flow need to use to cross the same path. Then from this first basic concept now, we can have two very important points. And that, like I, I see when I read the, the FreeBSD network mailing list, there's lots of problems come from here. The first one is you need multiple flows. If you are, if you are using just, for example, Hyper with just one IP source or one destination IP source with the same TCP, it's, it will not work. So you, you cannot use this uh, correctly. Um, if you are using some stuff like IPsec or GRE, you will break this concept to uh, has endpoint on your router or firewall. You will break this concept too, and lots of people forgot that. Uh, as example, in France, I've got lots of um, people using a PC Engine's IPU uh, with a PFSense on their home fiber, but the ISP, which is orange, uh, for them to use PPPoE. And once they did that, 
they don't have any more multiple flow. They're just using one core, and the performance have a very big impact. This is a very important step you need to, to understand. So second is what today is a, a CPU? Uh, is a physical core, logical thread, or what about NUMA? These are some questions uh, I need to, to answer. Then, for helping you to, before to try to tune, you need to take care, uh, you need to check how many, what the current queue, or uh, how many queues the traffic are spread between all your queue. You've got this information if you check your, um, with CCTL and FreeBSD, if you get the network uh, statistical information, they are not very easy to pass. Then uh, there is a, a script from Yandex, uh, which gave me which, uh, a Python script who allow you to, to, in real time, to see how many the queue are. It's very important stuff for, for a network guy. Uh, then you need to check this step. Once you, ha you, you are sure that you are using multiple flows, we can start to, to work together. The second step is about what is the core today. Uh, here is an example. Just on my Xeon Hacker with a Chelsea card, when I boot my server in default mode, you see 16 CPU, 8 per 2 uh, trade. The Chelsea by default driver choose to create only 16, or maximum of 16 transmit queue, one for each CPU, right? But only eight with Q of Q. I don't know why eight, but okay. He choose to eight. Then here, I say, okay, here is my first bench now. How I'm doing bench? Uh, I'm creating three configuration sets, one with the default value, a second one where I will force my Chelsea card to use the 16 Q available, uh, CPU available. On the latest one, where I just simply disable hyper-threading. Uh, my test I'm using, uh, for all my talk, I will use the FreeBSD 11.1 release. Um, then I, all my script are benched, I know human interaction. Then I will push a configuration set. I will do a benchmark with PKGGen. At the end of the bench, I will reboot again, and I will do it five times with a reboot between each time uh, all these benchmarks. It's very important for statistical uh, analysis. At the end, I will have three text files for each configuration set. On each each of these three files, I will have five, five values for my file value of my benchmark. And now, a little bit maths. With these three configuration files, I'll put them into Ministat. Ministat is a great tool. If you need to do benchmark, it's a mandatory tool to use. But it's very mandatory. And he will analyze <coughs> The, your different input set, and you will check if okay if it's very, you really have an impact or not. On this example, on the right part, for example, you can see that by default I've got the worst result. It's on my left side, and there is, and you can see with the distribution. Okay, there is no arguing about. It's very worst. I reach about 4.6 million packets per second. If I force my car to use a 16 CPU, I've got a little improvement. But if I just disable hyper-threading, I get the biggest improvement. Then, okay, the first thing is, okay, you need to disable hyper-threading because it doesn't help you uh, anymore on this case, on this use case, because you've got a lot of interrupt, and threading don't help you to manage all this interrupt. The first, the second news, it's, it's a bad news. Uh, this device is my biggest device. When I sell to my boss, I will, do, I will create you a, a 10 gigabit router. This means seven million packets per second. And I've got only five, that's seven. Okay, I need to find a solution. Uh, I've got a, a second question. Once I get this result was, mm, perhaps if I will had some core, a bigger server, uh, I will solve my problem. But before, mm, what's the relationships between the number of Q, then of core uh, assigned, on the performance on my server? Then I've generated eight graphics set. I'm forcing my uh, shell so card to use just for the first, just one queue and one CPU, and up to eight CPU. On surprise, with a reference blue line, right? It's a linear reference. Uh, we've got a problem. I can add CPU, but it will not solve a lot of my problem. There is some stuff, some big difference. It does not scale today. Okay, I'm a simple end user. How on FreeBSD do you dig this kind of problem? 
it's quite easy. You just need four command line. On this kind of four command line, you generate some stuff called flam graph. Flam graph, it's uh, give me the how to, how to say the hot function uh, how I spend uh, how I consume the CPU time. And from this graph, I can okay. I see four four interesting points. The first is there is okay. There is log contention about the first function, which is called IRP resolve. This function is used just for adding the destination MAC address to my packet once they are forwarded. The second one is a routing table. Uh, okay, I've got only two static routes on my bench. Um, I try to do some stuff uh, using eight routes, but no change. Then, but this first two I, has a users I can do nothing about it. There was a second one called the random RVSQ. Hmm, I will dig about it later. On the last one is you see the, all the part belonging to the Ethernet pass, the kernel Ethernet pass on the Nix driver. Okay, what can I do? I will try as an end user just to play with a random RVS source. On FreeBSD, uh, as an source by default, interrupt on all Ethernet packet, I read some data are taken from this uh, packet uh, for using, but at this very high rate, this impacts a little bit your performance. Then I just choose to disable uh, interrupt on Ethernet packet uh, frame from my configuration. I've got, it's just with this command line, uh, you change the input, and then I generate a new bench, but in all my server in my lab. And this is the result with all my server. Bad news on my big one, I've got no difference at all. Uh, I've got some improvement with my uh, eight core atom, a little bit. On my small gigabit router, see some improvement too. Uh, first conclusion here is that about, okay, I've got two small gigabit routers who are correctly able to do gigabit uh, forwarding from my point of view. Uh, the second one is, okay, I still have a big problem regarding my 10 gigabit router. Then how can I do as a simple end user? It's very easy, just call Google, and you will find that these are known problem. They are already fixed since few years by a crazy team from Yandex. Um, they are already have patches about that, and you just have uh, I just have to take their patches and to apply it to my uh, FreeBSD. I just backported these patches, one for the so the two log contention. Okay, let's try. Then I keep my harvest mask uh, modified. I apply this patch to my labs. And now here is a new result. Oh, surprise. Uh, almost twice, uh, twice more uh, performance on my router. Ouch, now, okay. My manager will be happy. Uh, second impact is, oh, there is a 10 gigabit uh, nick into this same server, but it just reached 1.33, it's even not a gigabit line rate. This card, what's this card? Okay. Uh, if you dig a little bit, you see that these cards, uh, you can configure the number of queue, you cannot configure a flow control, it's a very bad nick. Then you need really to take care about the nick card you will use. Uh, shells you are very good, Intel too, I didn't have Melanox for proving it, but there are very, very good review by the Melanox one. Then really try to, to use good network card. Uh, oh no, with these patches, what about my linear performance rate? Uh, I did this bench again, and you can see that the green line is, uh, um, is lots more better than previously. Now perhaps if I can add some core, I, perhaps I can have more performance. Uh, the second one is quite funny because between four core and eight core, there is a six core, but this does not scale. It's like we need to have a power of two number of core. I don't know why, it's, I didn't dig this, but it's a funny value. I, I was waiting more for my six core in this, uh, in this example. Now, let's, how can I try to improve more my problem? I need to, to work uh, of improving the performance perhaps uh, regarding the 
network cards and the drivers of, of the network cards themselves. Today, drivers are using lots of features. Then I try to, to look the main page of the driver. I say, OK, they have embed lots of checks and stuff. And there are embed two features that are very great for server, for endpoint server, which is called TCP segmentation offload on large receive offload. But these two features are very bad concepts in the routing world, I believe even in the firewall world. Then my, this is not a technical, perhaps technical, but more philosophical choice. I don't want to have these two features enabled in my lab when I try to read the, the, the main page. Then I choose to disable this feature in all my lab, and I try to regenerate my bench again for checking if I don't have a performance. OK, this confirms uh, there's no performance impact uh, at all uh, about this, this change. Then really, on a firewall or router, you, you should disable these two features. The second one on this slide, you can see that on my head core uh, atom, I've got a quite difference between my Celsius card and my Intel card on about one million packet per second. Then I try to look a little more how work uh, Intel card, what can I tune about the Intel card. I did a lot of tests. Uh, I, there is a long document about uh, interrupt management about Intel with lots of counters. Uh, I'll try lots of things, but like I say, all benchmarks are wrong. On my use case, my bench is very specific uh, with my line rate of packet. And I don't want to impact just my very specific benchmark or not a standard use case. Then I didn't work more uh, on the Intel driver, but at the end, I found just one parameter that, that, that matter. This parameter is by default uh, gigabit Intel card or 10 gigabit have a maximum number of uh, packets uh, they process per per watt per time per uh, I need to dig this one. And if you remove this limitation, if you just say okay, don't don't keep a high value of what the number of packets you can manage in one times, you can you find a little improvement. Uh, and this is okay. This is only by Checking how the user point of view and the driver, this is the only stuff at all I can find. Then I speak about with other, and they say me, but what about uh, queuing, um, pinning your multiple queue to each CPU? It means you you prevent the scheduler to change uh, the CPU of your uh, higher queue. I check the driver, but all almost lots of drivers already by default um, pin the, the queue to, the, to each CPU, with an exception of Celsio, which is interesting, I'm using Celsio. There is this function, but it's, it's not by default, and the generic kernel is not enabled. Then, again, Yandex gives me a script, always, I already did all this <laughs> stuff. And I say, oh, you can perhaps try this uh, script. It's a RC script when you force the binding. I try it. Um, there is not lots of difference. Uh, it's just uh, you, you start to see benefit just with very high throughput, more than 10 million packets per second. For example, on my eight core, I've got a little, little benefit, 1%. It's, well, it's not enough to, to, to take care about. On, on my uh, Atom eight core, I don't see any, any difference at all. Since, okay, it's not, for this use case, it's not very important. Then, okay, uh, I believe, for, just for a routing point of view, uh, I reach, as a simple user, the maximum I can reach. This means, okay, if you want to use FreeBSD as a router, you really need to check the patches from Yandex or for the, this team. There are online or there are people.freebsd page, if you know their name. And you need to disable hyper threading. Uh, the harvest mask uh, needs to be fixed too. Uh, and there are work in progress in this direction. And if you've got, uh, yes, on TSU LRO, you, you can do it. Uh, you, there is no impact on the performance. On, on Intel card, you, you, tr you can try to, to play a little bit. Then if I resume just for forwarding, before the tuning on my patch on after, 
we can find some, okay, a good improvement on the Xeon 8 core with the Celsius, a little less with the other uh, hardware. And this means that, okay, I reached my goal, which is, okay, I've got a Xeon 8 core, which I can call 10 gigabit router. My 8 core atom don't reach this status, okay. Uh, it's a pity because it's, it costs uh, are very cheap hardware. On my small NetGate, on my small uh, PC engines, APU are great for gigabit routing. This is it's a, it's a pretty small, cool machine. But I speak only you about IPv4, but in the range we are doing IPv6. Then let's just, uh, again, Yandex made for me a patches to package NetMap packaging for adding IPv6 uh, support. Um, I can generate uh, IPv6 packet in place of IPv4. And surprise, ouch, uh, okay. I've got a quite big impact. Um, hopefully, I'm still over by seven million packets per second, but the impact is quite, um, it's quite large. On the funny things here, on the shells, on the, um, Eight core atom. There is no more difference between the shell and the Intel because it's the kernel who who lose your all your performance in the, on the kernel, not on the perhaps on the, on the driver anymore. But okay, this is uh, the impact with just IPv6. We need to work a little bit on this part. Then, but customer have used standard curve setup, uh, different than mine. One of these. For setup is a lots of them are using VLAN tagging. Um, we are using at Orange another setup which I'm calling multi-tenant router, which is using uh, VNet jail. Then I want to check the impact of these two uh, configuration set on my configuration. For VLAN, I'm just generating okay my standard reference config without VLAN on the second one with VLAN tagging. It's just a very simple uh, difference. Uh, on today, the network interface, if you check them, they embed lots of VLAN accelerating stuff. Then, theoretically, they should be have no impact with my bench. Um, surprise, again, 17% of uh, degradation. Um, okay, uh, there is a la quite large impact uh, on this. It's, but Again, it's a known problem. And again, Yandex used already a patch since a long time on their server about this problem. It's, um, it's regarding the, well, the FreeBSD stack when he got a target frame. He used a long pass for uh, de-encapsulating this frame. And once he removes the VLAN tagging, he takes the frame and he sends them back to the beginning of the Ethernet for, for a standard. It's quite not very efficient. We've got a big impact on here. Then, okay, lots of customers who are using the land tagging perhaps will not be happy. But I'm still over my seven million packet per second. It's still okay. Oof. The second one is my multi tenant router. I need for that, by default, you need VMage. It's for the virtual network stack into FreeBSD. It's not enabled by default. Then, before to create a new configuration set, I need to add this option in my kernel. Then, if I had to add an option, I bench it. On the result, uh, with this option enabled, is here. In, <laughs> I lose some performance in IPv4, and I win a little on IPv6. But it's very small if you compare to uh, to the other bunch with uh, VLAN. Then it's it's okay. It's, it's quite okay. Six percent is okay. Now, VNet jail. Uh, on my server, I remove all the IP configuration when I move them into a VNet jail. This means there's no more IP address for my, on my hardware, my host. All the IP configuration are into the jail. On I can play now, I, if I check, I play on the PC Engine's IPU2, I play to generate, I don't remember, it's between 100 and 150 jails, VNet jail on this small hardware. It's very fun. Then, what's about the impact of this setup? Improvement? Degradation, it's quite no impact at all. It's quite a very, very, very good surprise. Uh, VNet now, 
I tried with uh, firewall, IPFW and PF because it's supported too. Uh, and uh, it's the same, there's no impact uh, at all. It's quite a, uh, once you enable the image, it's quite a very good, good use. Venetjail works, really. Okay, now, okay, I'm finished all my forwarding bench. Let's start planning a little bit with firewall. Okay, I will show you a graph after this slide. My first step is just to enable firewall. That's, we have three firewalls in FreeBSD. Um, I want to check how hard just enabling this firewall impact my performance. The next graph, will, I will not compare the firewall. It's a very important destination. I will just compare how bad I impact my routing firewalling. Then, okay, all bench are wrong. Then don't interpret this benchmark by saying that uh, PF sucks in front of IPFW. It's not what this bench means. It just means that, okay, um, on my uh, Xeon 8 core, the reference on the left is my forwarding rate at IPv4 and IPv6. And I generated a stateful and stateless setup with a minimum number of rules, one or perhaps two for IPF, the old one. And I just try, okay, how bad this impact? Um, bad news, okay, if I want to sell a 10 gigabit firewall to my manager, it start very bad. Perhaps IPFW in stateless mode, okay. But about the, all the others, it's uh, the impact. I don't compare firewall, just the impact is quite a bag. Now, uh, let's dig a little bit about what is technically speaking uh, a firewall. Let's do a next bench with, in front of my allow all rules, my unique allow rules, I've had lots of denied rules with a non-existing IP in my lab. And I try to play, okay, Let's try it with 1, 10, 1,100 um, rules. Um, you can see uh, still, on my, uh, now I switch my hardware. I don't anymore use my big Xeon hate core. I use my smallest, uh, one of my smallest, it was an 8-gate. It's a four-core atom. Why? Because, like I said, I do a reboot between each of my bench. On the reboot on a big HP server takes a very long time, about five minutes. On my bench is about one minute, and it's it take weeks to do uh, all this bench. But the netgate and IPU are very fast to to boot. On I was I'm more interested by the impact, or not by the uh, full value. Then here is we can see that IPFW and EPF are linear relation between the number of rules and that break their performance very, very easy. Uh, then the first rule is you need to keep the minimum number of rules, but very small. Uh, at 10, you start to, to, to hit your performance, just 10 rules. The second one, what the, it's my PF. What are you doing? You don't care about my rules. Then I dig a little. On this tricky guys, convert all my rules into one table. Then all bench are wrong. This is a wrong bench. I'm comparing Apple on Peach because one is using table and not the other one. Okay, you want to play with table. Let's play with table. For this next bench, I just I remove all my deny rules. I just have one deny table rules and one uh, allow all rules. And I try to increase uh, the number of IP <coughs> into this uh, into this table. On okay, using the same feature, we can see that we are agree, really use table if you can. Really, it's very, the impact is, is huge. Really, really huge, really huge. Um, other stuff is a good thing, it's like PF, it's lots of, lots smarter by default because if you will do that in your place, then you can save your brain for doing other stuff. Now, I play a lot of with stateless, so now let's, play with stateful setup. On my APFW stateful, I try to dig a little uh, about the default configuration setup of, state of IPF. And if you check, if you, my packet agent generate only UDP uh, unidirectional flow. And if from one flow, 
the IPF create one dynamic rules. It's one state on IPFW. Um, if you check this, by default, he accept a maximum number of uh, 16,000 uh, rules. And you've got, um, it's, this size is related to the hash table size. It was not very clear in the beginning when I start this, I discovered what is a hash table size. And then I try to increase this hash size tab to the maximum allowed by IPFW, which is um, 65,000, um, it's a power of two. And then I estimate the number of potential uh, keeping the same relationships uh, the, perhaps with this value, I can push my IPFW to, to manage 4 million UDP flow without any problem. Then let's try. I generate lots of uh, multiple flow by uh, using a large source range or large destination range of my IP packet. And you can see that the, you can hit uh, starting at about uh, 10,000, you can, uh, you can hurt a little your, uh, more your, your performance. On one million, it's totally out of, uh, then I, I cannot reach four million with uh, APF <laughs> Okay, uh, just for information, when I show this diagram to the Yandex team, the next day I had uh, three patches, uh, lockless, and all the stuff. The crazy guy, but okay, I need to do it. I didn't have, to, to, I didn't have time to do it for this, uh, for today. Now with PF, PF have a different behavior. For one flow, PF consume two states, one for each direction. Um, there is a linear relationships, and PF have the same number of state limit, like PF, on the same um, hash table size. Then, on my small NetGate device, I've got eight gigabit of RAM. Then I try to increase lots my hash table, for using the maximum value I can, which is about uh, 2.5 gigabit of RAM used for this hash table. And this means about, okay, I can, ha I can reach 10 million states, then 5 million of UDP flow in my previous, with, with my bench. And here is the impact uh, with PF. Okay, he does not care much about the number of states. Uh, it ca then really, if you, want to use a stateful firewall with complex rule. Okay, this one, you know, now we perhaps use PF. It's quite a, a very good uh, a behavior for this, uh, for this kind of, of stuff. Now, let's back. In 2002, uh, when I present for the first time my BSD water project, I complain mm -hmm. that we don't have MPLS feature and has a telco, uh, in Iran, we are using FreeBSD as a firewall because it's a no-go uh, if you don't have MPLS support. Um, NetMap was existing um, in 2002, and I was waiting for, okay, uh, where are the software, the user on the software on FreeBSD using NetMap for routing stuff? Now, today, still no MPLS, but the concept of user space forwarding is is a way to go today. If you want, if you check today uh, uh, at Orange, for example, um, preview this solution. When I speak with my network uh, colleague, if I want to install a software router, it was it were no go. I cannot talk with them about a software based on Linux or FreeBSD. It's a no go. But today they are removing all the Cisco or Juniper stuff, and they are using software router, but based on Linux because it's. Uh, Cisco FDAO and DPDK server. And on this, if you want to compare, uh, then we need to reach 12 million packets per second per core. I didn't even reach this with eight core. And this is, um, it's quite a very interesting gap to, to reach. And this is why lots of people ask me, hey, can you add to your benchmark? Can you compare it to OpenBSD or can you compare it to a Linux? It's, I'm not really interested by that. Once, because like you see, I will never compare a, a standard uh, non-tuned FreeBSD with another stuff because it's totally crazy. 
Then I need to learn how to optimize the OpenBSD and NetBSD and Dragonfly, and I don't have time to, for that because you need to compare Apple with Apple. Then if on second step, if I want to add a Linux in my lab, what kind of Linux I will have, what distribution? Then I'm no my my only interest is okay. Now we've got a value, a reference value to reach. On I prefer spend my time to help people to reach this unique value. Um, we will see after. Or FreeBSD there were from NetGate a software called NetMap Forward. I don't think it's maintained anymore on GitHub. I don't found uh, I download it. I didn't reach it to to use it. Uh, on I don't see lots of core of lots of code updated to it. This is why I'm I'm saying there's no production ready uh, software on on FreeBSD. Well, this is a shame because we are losing a role. Uh, really, it's. At last, I'm very happy to see my Cisco or Juniper stuff replaced by software, but it's a Linux. Okay. But all is not lost. Um, if you. Kernel space warning is still improved. Like you say, Yandex have a lot longer list of patch, very interesting. Uh, it's an old project called Project Routings, lots of old ideas that we need really to refresh. Uh, there were a talk uh, last year uh, about how to improve IP forwarding fast past. Um, interesting talk because reading this, I discovered that uh, user space forwarding have some problem I was not aware about. Um, um, yes, perhaps. I, okay, I believe we can still perhaps uh, play this uh, this game again. On um, about my. Um, all my bench script, my all the, the script I've used for all this stuff, all the configuration step I use, all my result, all the flame graph. About uh, when I generate my graph, uh, after um, I generate a new bench just for generating flame graph. Then for each uh, difference, it can help developer. On lots of the script, you can it found on the on the BZRP web page or GitHub page, are all all are online. Uh, why? Because I'm very afraid when a, a free BSD developer sends you a patch uh, for, or asks you, can you test this patch, please? I believe it's improved. Uh, I'm very afraid of doing a mistake in my lab or giving false value to a developer. Then this is why I, I want to lots of more people reading my script or my configuration stuff or my way of doing bench because it's quite uh, stressful to, to, to give false information of bad information. Okay, now, do you have any question? No, great. Oh, there's one here. Do, okay. I, you, you were showing a slide uh, where you were comparing like the performances using multiple cores. Yes. And uh, if I'm not wrong, when you were using like an odd number of cores, you, uh, you, you, you will have an impact. Is it possible that this is because of the association between cores and the NIC queues? I guess by design you will have an even number of queues. So if you use like an odd number of cores, you will have a mismatch. Uh, is there a developer who can answer to this question? <laughs> no? The interesting thing uh, is, can you, uh, a power of can you bring the microphone? To, <coughs> yeah. I noticed the very same, and it's actually any power of two, of course, you employ it bumps the performance to near linear. Yeah, but until selling some six core CPU, then try to avoid them on your water if you want. <laughs> this is the only advice I can give. But I, I don't understand this. I need to work with the developer for that. I'm not a developer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Another question? Oh, you here? Uh, no? Uh, it's Mr. Netgate. <laughs> Hello? First of all, very super happy to support you. Um, you mentioned NetMap Forward and you mentioned Clio's BPP. Um, we basically stopped work on NetMap Forward because we're focusing on Clio's BPP. There is work underway. The gentleman sitting to my right. Um, it needs about a man month to finish. We've been very busy with. Then you are working on the user space forwarding using DPDK on FreeBSD? Ooh. Um, Linux so far, but there is a port of Fido's BPP underway. Oh, great. Oh, great. I'm waiting this very... <laughs> 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 
Do you have a schedule? At some point, are the next and next patches going to be merged in the main branch? What are you doing? Are the Yandex patches going to be merged at some point? Yes. How the patches from Yandex will be merged? I don't know if it's a Russian culture or not, but they are very, each time you ask, they say, my patch is not ready, it's not clean enough. They are perfectionist person, you know? Then, because I'm not a developer, my role is to push them and to do some marketing stuff for them for trying to push this patch. Then yes, I'm using their patch in my in BSDRP. I'm testing it on the real field. Or now I can push them for saying, okay, uh, I can give, I can say, okay, I use them, they're working, then you need, uh, I push them to the FreeBSD project, yes. So, two things, by the way, I wanted to make a comment about uh, what you said about TSO and LRO. Um, for your workload, they should not matter at all, because you should never receive a TCP flow unless it's a control flow. In a router, you never go above the IP layer. Yes. So, I'm not surprised they don't have an effect. Um, I mean, they really shouldn't. The only time you see an effect is if you were receiving it. Yeah, but you can turn them off. But if you don't turn them off, mm -hmm. if you keep them, um, it's a TCO or TCP uh, LRO stuff. Mm -hmm. The firewall have uh, IPFW, for example, the lib alias, uh, the NAT library does not work. Then it's it's inside on the main page, and user have problem with that. Then my advice is, you don't have a, if you don't want to have any problem. Yes, on the router, disable it. But it, it's, yes, it's, it's logical. We don't have to, to use it. Uh, the other thing is on the, on the Yandex patches, some of them are quite good in a very narrow application. Yes. So they will make forwarding better, but they will also have negative effects on the rest of the system, which we have to care about. We need for these to get to care about. Mm. Um, the other thing is that <clears throat> what, what Olivier is looking at is performance but not always correctness. Um, so the Yannick patches often need a bit of, they're right, they need to be fixed so that they don't just remove locking, they still leave the correct locking. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, there is another Oh no, not you. <laughs> <laughs> person to ask a question should be like way on the other side, you can give uh, Larson exercise. So uh, my question was, um, you briefly touched on the subject of hardware, VLAN acceleration and without, but um, out of curiosity, what is there to accelerate? Uh, yeah, the, the problem is when I did my bench, I did a third one by disabling the acceleration stuff. Uh, but. It's not a correct bench between before. We need to fix this VLAN. Uh, we need to fix this VLAN problem in, into the kernel pass. On once I will test this patch. I can now generate a new bench without the hardware acceleration for a real point of view about with or without. Uh, currently, because the kernel pass already slow down the rate. You've got uh, a worst uh, result with this uh, feature of disabled, but uh, but it's not very worse because it's a kernel who already uh, break your performance. Then I will do this. Yes, I will check with the feature and with the feature off. Uh, once I will check the new patch from Yandex uh, that fix this problem. But I was more interested in like what what does the hardware need to do to accelerate. Like yes, on the VLAN, on the, um, you had uh, the number of the VLAN into the packet. Uh, on this number, when you receive a target from, then the network have to remove this uh, this tag, for example. And this is how to, on just the number of VLAN, uh, the, the, you need to remove this, this tag and use this tag for the virtual interface uh, routing. It's a very small action, really technically, but it's it's matter. No more questions? Oh, here. Oh. Okay.
think you can hear me. No, no, you can mind. Yes, hello. Hello? Have you done studied any effect of uh, out of order delivery of packets? Of, of what? Out of order delivery. Because no, uh, I'm using, uh, for the moment, I'm using NetMap Packetagen, which is a very dumb, uh, very simple tools, just uh, it's a denial of service tools, if you want. Uh, if I want to measure uh, out of order packet, I need to have a more smarter tools that read, will read all the uh, an, an index in each packet generated or will compare. For that, uh, at Orange, we've got Xia, which is very expensive hardware, um, but I don't have it for the moment in my lab. But I need to check, uh, there is a Cisco stuff based on DPD key called T-Rex, and I need to check this software for, for, for this kind of more advanced uh, performance test. Yes, really, I need to do it. Thank you. Uh, just behind you. <laughs> I think like context switching are really impacting in terms of uh, performances, right? You said that there's like a, a project that wants to move everything in kernel space. From the kernel space, uh, it's DPDK. It's, uh... Yeah. Did you make some tests using? No, because I don't have. Uh... FreeBSD, uh, oh, but Jim, perhaps did you did you already did that? Uh, can you give the micro to? Just as a point of reference on i7, a 10 core i7, we're doing over 42 million packs a second with BBD. It's quite. Yeah, yeah but we, we need to fight against this solution uh, on Linux. We need to have the same on FreeBSD. <laughs> Hello, um, thanks for the talk. Uh, I just wanted to know about the simplicity of PKD Gen. Uh, and you mentioned Python. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's actually surprising to say, but you can use Python and Python bindings for NetMap to give some smartness into NetMap. And uh, for example, like for checking off the uh, of the ordering and stuff like that, multiply that by Cyton, and you will give you, uh, you will have a decent performance. Try that. Oh, where did you find this? How do you? Did you uh, well, I'm from Intel, and we're doing you. Okay. We're, we're uh, I'm, I'm a network software engineer. I'm the guy who okay. validates those drivers, okay. which you were talking about. And okay. uh, yeah, we do use NetMap for uh, for different things, like okay. for for example, for f uh, by the way, flow control testing. Okay. And uh, yeah, we use that API to integrate into our Python written tools. And they, well, I just, you know, I thought it would be a huge performance drop when you use Python to, to manipulate the rings, but it wasn't really. It was, it, it was decent. Okay. Very, very good. Your script, is, is, does your script is online? Or? Uh, no, it's internal open source. That means that it's open source. Shame, public shame on you. Go, go out, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can. Here's your sneak peek. Thanks. <laughs>